Clara, how are you feeling today? Hi, I'm feeling very energetic because it's Friday. <laughs> same. I can't say it's the same because it was a very busy week. Um, but yes, I'm quite looking forward for the weekend. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> Do you have any plans? Sorry? Do you have any plans? Uh, yes, I'm going out to eat. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Um, but and then I have loads of errands to do on Sunday. All right. And then Sunday, hopefully, I can relax and recharge before Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Usually Sunday is the day that we all relax and yes, hopefully. for the first half of the day, and then we yes. get Sunday blues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. Great. Perfect. So. What are you currently working on Clara, at the moment? All right. So at the moment, I am director of English studies at Asensia. Right. Which means it's a whole new project for mm -hmm. me. Um, and my day to day is usually split between teaching. I have four lovely Indian students and one Pakistani student. Okay. Um, and I teach them English and I try to teach them business. <laughs> But it's really not my area. <laughs> Um, and then I have loads of admin tasks, so that's course design and making sure that teachers have something to teach when they arrive here, mm -hmm. um, applying for different courses. We're trying to get a lot of courses accredited mm -hmm. so that we can say that we have homegrown programs. So that's the work project, I like to call it. Um, and then on the side, I try to keep up with my hobbies <laughs> because now I can do that. Now I've got the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you do have quite a lot of hobbies, right? Yes, yes, I do, I do. Um, I like doing paper crafts. Okay. Um, I do a craft called quilling, which is basically thin, really thin strips of paper, and you roll them into different shapes. So okay. you can make flowers, and you can make anything. You can make animals. I like to make cards with them. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then I like to paint. I love to read. Honestly, my dream Sunday is everyone leaves me alone for half a day so I can get started on my novels. <laughs> That's the dream What Sunday. What are you currently reading? Never happens. Um, at the moment, I'm reading the Prince Harry book, Prince which, which is, is a bit bi embarrassing. <laughs> biography, is it? Yes. Okay. It's well, ghostwritten, I think, but hmm. claims to be a biography, an okay. autobiography, yes. Okay, all right. Um, so I'm reading that. <laughs> but I'm also reading And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie and the second book of Dune. I've started that. Okay, I, I still have to watch the movie. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan of reading, if I'm, if I'm honest. I, I'm a more of a visual person. I like to watch videos yes. or, or, or movies. But I still have to watch Dune. So. Uh, Dune is... Dune I wanted to do properly. I didn't want to okay. watch the movies before reading the book All right. this time. I did yeah. that with Game of Thrones and with Lord of the Rings. And with Harry uh, Potter, perhaps? And No, oh. with Harry Potter, I read the books first oh, and okay. I was always ahead of the films. All right, okay. Um, because the films used to disappoint me, the Harry Potter ones, especially. Mm. Especially the first one, because the first book I had read about two years before the films came out. Okay. And I built up the universe in my head and the, you know, the characters looked the way I thought they did. Yeah. And then when I saw them on screen, I was like, This isn't my universe. <laughs> and then I got used to it. That's the magic about reading, though. You, 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 the sky is the limit when it comes to imagination. So you can yes. Im imagine, anything, imagine anything. Yes. And you give it your own interpretation. And you can ignore details that the author wants. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, you could take it to where you want to take it. It's true. That's why I love reading. I love it. I will watch the movies. Mm -hmm. um, but and then I'm not the kind of person who will go, oh, that wasn't in the book. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not like that. I appreciate that movies are different genre. <laughs> yes, I think it's a, it's a it's a creative spark on its own. So yes. the producer or director takes it um, according to their own yes. imagination as well. Yes. So and they have a vision for it. Yeah. Sometimes they're ahead of the books, like what happened in Game of Thrones. Yeah, so right. yes, even though the ending was sli I did. still a bit disappointing. No spoilers. No spoilers. I haven't watched you it. Haven't watched I it? haven't been able to bring myself to rewatch them all so that I'm up to speed to watch okay. the final scene. All right. So <laughs> I'm well, working up the courage. <laughs> in all fairness, the um, the the books are not completed yet, so yes. that will we'll give yes. it the, the However, in terms of storytelling, it's still it's still a bit. Lacking. A lot of people yeah. said that. A lot of people yeah. said, "Good, you can just skip it completely." <laughs> But I don't want to. I do want uh, to finish it. Yeah, I would still suggest that you finish it. Yes. <laughs> At least for in terms of, it will give you closure as well. <laughs> yes, and then I'll try and re bring myself to read the books, but I think the books yeah. are probably more heartbreaking than the films. <laughs> well, probably, yes. Probably, yes. However, it, uh, Game of Thrones is still quite brutal, eh? so... Uh, yes, but so, so many characters that you love die, and then when yeah. you build them yourself in your head, it's even worse. So I don't know if I'll read them. <laughs> 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 but Dune, yes, Dune I'm enjoying. Dune is so political. It's great to, to see all the intrigue in the books. Mm -hmm. It's fun. 
I don't think uh, you'd need to be a really good film director to capture that. Well, I still have to watch the movie, so I, 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 I <laughs> to be honest, I, I don't, I don't know anything about Dune, so I'm not sure. About they the say context. it was the inspiration for Star Wars. Really? It was George Lucas's because it's a sand planet, and you know, Tatooine is a sand planet. Okay. You have this young prince who doesn't know his, well, who knows his father, but loses his father very young. There are lots of similarities with the Star Wars universe. Okay. But and then obviously George Lucas took it to a different place. But still, you have intergalactic politics, you have an emperor, loads of similarities. All right, so it's a sort of an interstellar yeah. experience and journey. Yes, okay. yes. And the politics, the intrigue is like Game of Thrones. It's cutting, it really is. All right. <laughs> I, it, it think it's intrigued me more. So. <laughs> but you need to be awake. That's the only yeah. unfortunate thing about the book. So if you're trying to read it at 10 o'clock after a long day at work, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what Sundays are for. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, Sunday morning. Yeah, <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah, you're a person of uh, of of various interests, as as, as we're, we're discussing. Um, can you recall perhaps a decision that you took um, in the past that led you to where where you are today? Oh, um, well, I, I w not one decision. No, um, it was a series of decisions that I thought would take me to somewhere like this, but not exactly this either. Um, subject choices are those kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. But honestly, even when I took my subject choices, <laughs> I tried to keep as many doors open for myself as possible. So I took English, I took Maltese, I took, um, I took, Mal I took Maltese because I thought I was going to try law, for example. Mm, right. So I never really had this goal in mind. Um, but at the same time, I always knew that I wanted to work with different people from different nationalities, um, do something that would allow me to speak to people and to learn from them and their cultures. So in a way, this ticks all those boxes, but I never planned to be a director of English studies. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, those decisions, the subject choices and the education, I think they were leading me down the path of academia in a way. I just didn't plan for it to happen that way. Okay, so um, it seems that you're saying that uh, you kept, kept your doors as open as you can be. Yes. And then you just stumbled yes. upon here because it's ticks all the boxes that you, you yes. that you this about your, your dream chance. job. Is this yes, your dream this job? Um, well, it ticks a lot of the boxes of my dream job. Yeah. Um, I love to teach. I love, <laughs> um, I love imparting what I know, not just filling mm -hmm. empty containers. You know, it's not like that for me. Imparting what I know, getting different ideas and different perspectives on what I think I know, mm -hmm. having conversations with adults, especially like young teenagers towards early adulthood. Yeah. Uh, those are the ages that teach me so much. Mm -hmm. Um, I also wanted at one point in my life to be an archaeologist, and then I also wanted to be a diplomat. Um, but then I realized that that would take me to war zones. <laughs> and I thought, mm, no, no. <laughs> I don't think I'm cut out for a war zone. Yeah. <laughs> so that was why I closed well, you, you some you of my doors. You them up for sure. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, it's not for me. Just, listening to politicians and diplomats talking about how they have to go from one place to another in an armored car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not the kind of lifestyle I could see myself living yeah. with ease. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that, I closed some of my own doors as well when I realized what I think I could do and what I can't. I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I can resonate uh, with that because um, I I well I never had a clear path when it comes to to my to my career and I still feel the same way. Um, so the sky is the limit and I, and I do whatever um, comes along sort of. Um, However, I think that your persona and your, your character and what you, what you like drive you to, yes. towards, towards you belong, sort yes, of. Yes, yes. Um, and nothing is really by chance in that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's you, it's yeah. where you've taken yourself without knowing it. It's just about enjoying the ride in, yes. in, 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 in yes. that sense. And taking as much, learning as much yeah. from the curve as you can. Do you think that there's, that there's a downside to that? Um, yes, because you, you might end up doing various things before you realize what you actually like. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, looking back, you might think, I wish I had known that I would love doing this so much, I could have spent more years doing it. Mm -hmm. But really and truly, I never believe that everything is an experience that can teach you something and no one can take your learning away from you. That's for So sure. That's right. 
everything is worth it, even mm. when you when you fail or when you th perhaps don't achieve what you think you should have. Mm -hmm. I don't think even that is a disadvantage because mm -hmm. you get a chance to know about yourself as well. Mm -hmm. To well, learn what you can and can't do. Sometimes I miss not being a specialist. <laughs> 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 it's nice not to be a specialist sometimes. It depends on how long you've been a specialist in something for. <laughs> the, 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 the thing that I notice that um, when it comes to people who are specialists in what they do is that they are extremely passionate about what they're doing. Yes. And when I look in words, yeah. um, I am very passionate in whatever I do. Um, however, it's not long term in most ah, cases. All right. And uh, I'm not sure whether that's that's well, there's no right or wrong in this. No, but you can be a specialist in yeah. whatever you're doing at the time. Hmm. Does, you don't have to be doing something for a very long time to be a specialist. You just need to get good mm -hmm. at it really quickly. Yeah. So, hey, you can be a specialist in many more things than I probably will be <laughs> in my lifetime. <laughs> well, the point, I, I think it, 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 uh, it's about how much you let yourself open to, yes. to, to, to learning. So. Yes. And whether you, whether you appreciate change a lot or not. Mm -hmm. I, for one, I'm the kind of person who is very wary of drastic changes. Um, I'm, I'm always a little bit afraid of those um, because, uh, not because I don't think I can handle it, but because I, it's a bit inconvenient. <laughs> I don't like the inconvenience of changing things constantly. I like having a settled moment okay. where I know that I'm doing this for a longish time. Um, even when I'm working, even when I'm doing day-to-day -day tasks, I prefer to spend two hours settled and focused and work on something, one thing than do 10,000 things at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm very much like that. So change, so I you're find... you not a multitasker. I can be. Okay. But oh, I don't I like to be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I'm a man. I, I didn't say it. <laughs> you said it. But there's a stereotype, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, I mean, a lot of... And stereotypes are based on patterns. And yeah. I, I, it is a pattern that I've noticed. A lot well, of men will admit to this. <laughs> I can't speak for all the men, but I, many of my friends male friends yes. who are not multitaskers. So. And they admit to it happily. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. even, even a lot of my students will tell me, I'm, I'll ask them, like, why are you doing this and not this? Why are you not doing them both together? And they're like, mm -hmm, multitasking. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think it is a gender thing. Mm. I can multitask, but I just don't enjoy it as much because I mm. don't feel like I'm giving my all to the thing that I should be. I feel like I'm spreading myself thin, but obviously sometimes you need to. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes you need to learn how to, multitasking teach you to prioritize as well. Mm -hmm. So. And sometimes you're so accustomed to that particular task that yes. you can do it with your eyes closed. Your so. eyes closed, hand behind the back if yeah. necessary. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's expert. That's expert <laughs> level. Yes. But those are the routine things. <laughs> yeah. You know, the things that you allow yourself to do for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then maybe it'll be something that you're not comfortable doing, so you'll need to think more well, about it. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like teaching. Like, you know, the, you start teaching and it's like stage fright every day. And then you become so used to it that you can answer the phone, answer your emails, correct other people's tasks while you're teaching. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's correct, but it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you, I, I probably you did, but, uh, but did you ever teach online or blended? Uh, no, I didn't have the opportunity to do that really? okay. because during COVID, when that became you know, the fashionable thing to do, yeah. um, or the necessary thing to do. Um, I was working on my thesis, okay. <laughs> so I didn't want to do any, anything that wasn't related to that. All right. Because I wanted to get it done. For sure. <laughs> so I, I missed that opportunity. And to be honest, I didn't feel like I was missing out, because all the teachers I was speaking to were going, oh, it's a nightmare. It's yeah, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but, but apart from that, it was the right time for you to finish the thesis. Yes, it was perfect. Ample time to it do was so. Perfect. so. Everyone was complaining about COVID, and I was going, "Thank God, I have an ex I have a very good reason to be at home and antisocial." <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. Perfect timing. <laughs> really perfect. I rewrote my thesis twice in that time, so more than enough time <laughs> okay. to do everything. <laughs> how 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 was a PhD experience? Um, a lot of PhD experiences depend on the subject that you're doing. Okay. So if, you tend, if you're doing an arts PhD, um, it's quite solitary. It can be solitary because it's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of writing and rewriting and editing. And then you change things and then you read something new and you realize that you're wrong and you have to start all over again. So it's a lot of introspection. Okay. I'm not saying that you have to be antisocial or that you have to lock yourself up in a room mm -hmm. for four years and just type. But 
there are moments when you need everyone to clear off so that you can think. Um, but if you're doing a PhD in the sciences, I've, I've noticed it seems to be a bit more of a different process because there's more evidence. Okay. You're not, you never feel like, but am I on the right track? You always have a right and a wrong, it seems, from, from what my conversations with science PhD students. You have tests, you have results. If the results don't match your hypothesis, mm -hmm. think again, you know. But you always know where you are. With an arts PhD, it's very... It's not walking in the dark, but you have There's a lot objective. of voices. Uh -huh, and you read a lot, and this person says this, and that person says the opposite. You have to figure out where you stand. There's no right or wrong, mm -hmm. really. And that's, that takes a lot of brain power. But if you have like-minded people around you, like uh, in the first year, uh, I noticed that the English department wasn't, um, wasn't having a symposium anymore um, because the, something happened. Uh, I don't know what happened. And they stopped organizing it. And that was a chance for the students to get together, students from the same year, to present their work, to talk, to challenge each other, to ask each other questions. And that really used to help. It created a sense of community. And I felt a lack of that. Um, and I remember speaking to, to one of the lecturers, who was also my tutor, and <laughs> he cheekily told me, uh, why don't you set something up? So I talked to a couple of PhD students, and that year we had quite a few doing English, which was okay. unusual. And we set up a little informal reading group. So once every two, three weeks, we used to go out. We used to take a text, some, whatever someone happened to be reading at the time, um, present it, talk about it, argue with each other, forget about it, have a drink, yeah. start complaining about the PhD process, you know? And that really helped. It kept all of us really sane. Mm. So it doesn't have to be lonely. It can be really buzzing with new ideas. And even if you don't understand what someone is doing, even if someone's doing medievalism and you're doing something that was published last year, you can mm. still have a conversation as long as it's more or less in the same subject area. So it's nice. Eh? It, that, that really kept us sane. I'm it's, happy for it's that. It's a matter of what you decide to, to do about the situation. Yes. In yes. case you decided to find a solution for a problem. For I, the, I do try. Yeah. I do try. I do believe that if, if something is going wrong in your life, you have the power to fix it and no one else. Mm -hmm. So right. when I felt like I was going nuts, because as much as your friends and your family want to help you, if you don't have someone in that area, it's so specialized, you might as well be speaking Chinese. Mm -hmm. They want to help you. They want to understand you. But it's too specialized. Mm -hmm. So when you realize that you're going nuts, the only thing you can do is socialize. Yeah. <laughs> and it helps. Well, it's the power of unity. Yes, yes. And the power of complaining as yeah. well. Yeah, indeed, We're Maltese. Indeed. We enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's our bread and sport. butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a national sport. I love that. <laughs> Complain, yes. <laughs> but yeah, you know, <laughs> everyone venting, venting <laughs> pent up feelings. It gets you through, though, because yes. obviously it's, it's, a long, it's a long process. Yes, it's four years, sometimes six years if you're doing it part time. Uh, if, 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 in your case, it's quite short, four years for, for a PhD. And, and I wanted to finish it in short. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, three years, I'll be done. How long can it take to write this yeah. thing? <laughs> yeah. But it does take a while. You're, you're editing, you're constantly changing and adding mm -hmm. and finding new paths. So it mm -hmm. does take four years. <laughs> what did you learn about yourself in, that, in those four years? Ah, I learned that I need to do a lot of exercise when I'm doing something <laughs> that needs brain power. That okay. helped. COVID also helped with that. So during writing, you're, you're doing squats or no, something? I need, or? No, I need to stop for an hour, <laughs> cry while I'm doing yoga or okay. <laughs> lifting right. weights, and then go back. Okay. But it helps. Physical activity really helped me to think. Um, I also learned that um, after finishing, though, I learned that. I said, oh, I can do this, I can do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it, gives, it doesn't give you a sense of invisibility, but it makes you believe in yourself. There are so many problems and setbacks that you encounter in your thinking and in your writing, mm -hmm. and you manage to solve each one, mm -hmm. one after the other, eventually you start to believe in yourself a lot more. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't believe in myself before, but after that I thought, you know what, I've solved so many problems. And whatever comes my way, I can probably solve it. Yeah. You know, so far, haven't been proved wrong. <laughs> so you, be you, know, you so believe you in yourself much more. And that's resilience. Yes, it does teach you resilience, yeah. yes. And... And sometimes you will feel, you, a lot of students who've done a PhD will tell you, I have imposter syndrome. 
I'm not good enough. I can't finish this. I'm mm. oh, I'm reading this guy. He said everything I want to say. I'm reading this this female author. She said everything I want to say. Why am I writing this? So you do feel like that a lot, regardless of what your personal state of mind is. Usually, mm -hmm. you will feel it at some point. But when you complete it, you realize actually no, no. You know what? That was me. I did that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a nice feeling. But you need yeah. to finish to get that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for sure. Yeah. During it, until you submit, you're going to feel like an imposter for most of it. <laughs> what kept you hanging though? Because obviously you need my to friends, persevere. My friends, my okay. tutors. Um, my, my parents are extremely supportive people. Extremely supportive. Um, so the fact that I had home comforts around me also helped a lot. You know, going downstairs, having a nice hot meal. Yeah. They mean so much more to you when you're stressed or you feel like you're at breaking point. So yes, parents, friends, my tutors, those, and exercise. Yeah, <laughs> so I think that they are all very important coping coping strategies. Yes, yes. Um, it's important to have the backup of your friends and your loved ones. Yes, because, and yeah. a lot of a lot of students who are doing PhDs tend to be much older than I am. So some of them have husbands, wives, children, yeah. partners, family members that they need to take care of. Um, and my advice to them is always make sure that your relationships are in a space where they're flexible enough to support you because you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're always needed and you never have time for yourself, PhD life can be really hard. And it's a long, a long, a long, it's long a term long commitment. Time. Yes, yes. And if you're if you're keeping up a job at the same time, and your job is exerting pressures on you, it's even harder. Mm -hmm. And I really admire professionals who manage to do their PhD while raising a family and, and being successful career people. That's, that's a superpower. Because I did mine in relative ease. Mm -hmm. You know, four years full time. I was living at home. I still am. I had, didn't have a job for the last two years. So it was perfect for me. And I still found it difficult, mm -hmm. let mm -hmm. alone those are the people with superpowers. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you think that... that what gives you th that superpower? I have no idea. Good time management, <laughs> definitely. Um, probably an ability to, I'm not saying that you cut corners, but an ability to know that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be finished, which is something that I don't have. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I will strive until I think it's perfect. But in situations where you have other demands on your time, you can't afford that. Mm -hmm. You have to know when it's good enough to go. And I think it's that. Time management, support, good communication skills. Listen, I need this from you right now. Can you give that to me? Which is important, especially if you have a partner or children and you want a quiet time for yourself. You know, you need to be able to communicate that and why. It's a mixture of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some people have it. Actually, it remind me of something. Um, well, I'm not sure that whether this is a saying or, or a theory of some sorts, um, but um, it's... Usually when you give yourself two hours to complete a task, you'll, you'll take up the whole two hours. Oh, yes. But if you take, give yourself one hour to complete the same task, yes. you'll you will finish it in one I think in it's a hour. meme. It's been doing the rounds. Yes. It's true. It's true. The tasks kind of fill, fill up any available time. It's true. Yeah. Um, especially if you have a procrastination problem, <laughs> which you do, you do develop, <laughs> especially when you're putting off writing well, this. Or there doing is a that. space for procrastination and productivity. And yes creativity so yes but it also depends on your process i'm yeah. the kind of person who will perform brilliantly if it's 10 minutes before the deadline give me an hour before the deadline and i'll, I'll waste 50 minutes of it because i know i can do it in 10 mm -hmm. i'm that kind of person i think it, i think my tutors realize that so you like you like uh, driving yourself pressure into a corner. deadlines yes yeah. okay there i thrive i've always been like that but some people need longer. They need time to think. They need time to draft. So those are the people who probably won't procrastinate. They'll actually be thinking. Mm. They'll still do the task in 10 minutes, but they'll take, they'll use the other 50. Mm. It depends on what kind of work worker you are. I've always been management by crisis. Mm. Always. <laughs> it depends on, on the level of, on, on the stress level that you can handle as well. Because if yes. you can't handle it, um, a certain level of stress... Yes. And it's better for you to juggle your time more effectively. Yes, yes. I'm not saying that my, my method is right. It is stressful. It suits you. So. But I've always worked like that. Yeah. Even exams. Exams, perfect. Two weeks before, I'm not, I haven't started studying yet. Brilliant. <laughs> the only time I ever studied early for exams was my finals in third year 
of bachelor's. Okay. And that's because I had to study all three years of work. I had synoptic yeah, exams, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had four because I, I did a general bachelor's. So I had four, four, four of I those. I can resonate with that. But um, two weeks ahead, that's when I started studying, never months ahead, because my short-term memory mm-hmm. is much better mm-hmm. than my long-term memory. <laughs> so <laughs> chuck it all in there. <laughs> and then you remember. And then we'll remember. And sometimes, um, if you pay attention during the lessons, just a little yes. bit. Yes. Just a little bit. No, I was very focused. Uh, I can't say the same for myself. <laughs> I was always very focused. <laughs> but at least if you pay attention a little bit during the lesson... Um, that, that, that works well. A lot, yes. Because I remember moments in the, in the exams going, oh, I don't remember this. Okay, what did they say in class? Go yeah. back, go yeah. back. Uh, you, do, you do remember things in class. It's amazing. You remember what people were saying. You remember who asked that question that led to that answer. No, that, that's true. And because they're sense-driven. There, there are a lot, of, are a lot of senses. There's the yes. visual, there's the auditory, there's the sensations. Yes. And they all come into play yeah. when you're studying. Yeah. And I was also the kind of person who would not just listen during lectures. I used to take good, very good notes during the lectures. So it used to save me time having to write them before the exam. Okay, all right. So, and then I just used to condense those. That's how I used to study. I used to take my notes from class, mm-hmm. make them shorter, make them shorter, make them shorter, until I eventually got them into my head. And sometimes the moment you grasp a concept, you grasp it's it. There. You don't need to yes. revisit it. Every, yes. t- every time and time and time That's and when true. it comes to languages oh yes when it comes to poetry and narratives um, yes. if you study a particular um, era most authors would share the same feelings yes. fears and, and, yes. and a form of expression so that's true um, that's true having said that though when you're studying literature and then you need to read the text ideally yeah, for sure. yeah. I mean yeah. I'm sure I have gone to exams not having exactly read the novel or but read the summary not even, but, <laughs> but somehow it works out for, for the better. <laughs> or, or else watch the movie and... <laughs> that, that, that's very helpful. The BBC adaptation is the place to go usually. And then you kind of figure out, okay, I don't think this was in the book somehow. I won't mention this in the exam. <laughs> yeah. But you have to be an avid reader for that, for yes. you to realize that it, this, yes. was, this might not have been in the books. Yes, like when, have you watched The Pride and Prejudice? The, no. Not the one with Kira Knightley. The one with Colin Firth. There is a famous scene anyway. He jumps into the pond. He's shirtless in the in the TV series. He's okay. shirtless, and I remember when I was young thinking, "Hmm, Jane Austen. Mm-hmm. Interesting, <laughs> interesting choice." It turned out it was not in the novel. Uh, I see. So you that do eventually yeah. realize yeah. what's what was in and what wasn't. It was in the spark, the spark of the creativity. Yes, <laughs> but not hers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the daughter of a vicar. I don't think so. <laughs> so yeah. But uh, with literature, it's a different kind of study. Mm. You read, you understand, like you're saying, the spirit of the times. But then you have theories to study. You still yeah. have theorists and you still have philosophies that you need to apply. So there is an element of studying that has to come in anyway. Yes, and the theories that are the game changer, I would say. Yes. Then. So you have to know them by heart. Yes, most ideally. Of the time. Ideally, yes. And then uh, if you're studying something else, you, it's the processes that mm. you, you need to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you were very active as a student. Yes, I was. What, 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 <laughs> what's the story behind that? Um, the story behind that actually started in sixth form. Um, uh, at sixth form, we were very much encouraged, and that's what I loved a lot about De La Salle. Um, we were very much encouraged not just to study and to excel there, mm-hmm. but also to take up something, whatever it was, on the side. Um, so they encouraged us to do Euromed, which was like a a little festival where we represented Euro-Mediterranean countries okay. and we had to do like a dance and make souvenirs and make food from the country. And that was like a little festival that took up some of our time during first or second year. They used to encourage us to do La Salian Nights, which was like like St. Aloysius's soiree. Okay. So a big performance and if you wanted to join, you could. And um, They also asked us to do uh, Young Young Enterprise something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, but that was more for people who are business-minded. Yeah. They had to come up with a product that I didn't do. <laughs> neither, did I, neither did I participate in Les Alien Nights, and I missed that. But they also encouraged us to do something called Mini European Assembly. Mm-hmm. And that's when my passion for politics and international relations started. Um, again, it was the, the concept was represent a country, but it was a series of debates. And I participated in that with four of my friends from De La Salle. Uh, Two of us were doing history and English, so we had all the same classes together. Mm -hmm. Um, And we actually won. 
We, okay. we won. We came second, but I, I forget that we came second. I always say we won. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, we went on the prize tour. Yeah, okay. We went to Belgium. So with you the won. Fir- so we still won. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, that that made one of us go to an int- a bigger conference. Still, she wanted to do one abroad. Mm-hmm. And when she came back, she told us, guys, there are actually societies that train these students to do these simulations and to win awards. They're really cool. They're like robots, but they're really cool. <laughs> and she said, let's start one. She was insane, but I thank her for it. Um, she, she had such vision <laughs> for the future. Um, and so we said, yes, yes, we can do this, yes. So we went to one of these conferences, 2,000 delegates in London, no training whatsoever. We thought, yeah, we won a conference in Malta, we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, one of us, it wasn't myself, but one of us came back with an award from that conference. So sure. we thought, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> it wasn't her. It was it was the guy who eventually became president of, of Multiman for the first year. Okay. Um, and we thought, yeah, we can do this. Definitely. We got an award. Come on. <laughs> so we started a voluntary organization in our first year of university. Um, and this year, that voluntary organization is having its 10th anniversary. It's celebrating that this year. Um, and we started it, and we enrolled it with the with the CVO in Valletta. Okay, so Mela, it's, no, uh, official, it's, uh, okay. official, everything done by the book. Um, and we started to organize local debates, uh, training sessions, so how to do public speaking. Okay. Uh, those used to really go down quite well. Um, and for most of that time, I was training officer, and I was secretary general, so I had two, two main roles, yeah. um, which I loved because training officer meant that I was handling lectures and giving them and teaching people how to do public speaking and learning myself. Um, and secretary general taught me a lot of things about organizing things for an organization, doing paperwork, working things out with banks. So it gave me a lot of practical skills as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for all of my student life, I was enrolled in this organization. I was president of the organization for, for a year, I think. So, yeah, it, it was good. And then it was heart-wrenching when I had to leave. Sure. But I realized, like, okay, I'm getting a little old for this now. <laughs> <laughs> the younger generations need a chance. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Of course, yes. Uh, was it for students? Is it for students? Yes, or? Okay. yes, it's for students from all over university. Okay. Um, mainly it's, it's law students who tend to look for these things, which is great for the law students and mm-hmm. well done for them taking the initiative. But we'd like to see students from all over university coming into Melbourne mm-hmm. because you can learn so many skills. A lot of people think, oh, but it's about politics. I'm doing microbiology. Why is this useful to me? But the skills that you can gain from it and the friends that you can make yeah. are amazing. Like this morning, I just got a text from a friend I made in that first conference in London we haven't spoken in six years. I got a text from him. So you build networks as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, that, that, was, that kept me active for all of my student life. And I really enjoyed it. Okay. Very interesting. Yes. First, I never heard about the, the, the NGO. Um, however, um, it, might, it might have been at the same time that you were organizing this, this NGO. So <laughs> it was yes. still in, the, in its early phases. Yes. However, I remember taking up uh, a short course, a degree plus course, about public speaking. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And I forgot the, uh, the name of the individual who delivered the course, but you might actually know him. Um, I'm not sure, but... You can tell uh, me after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a, have a certificate some, somewhere of at course, home. Of course, degree plus gift uh, yes. certificates, yes. So I'm not sure whether there is the name of the trainer who delivered the course. Um, but yeah, he was a was a young chap with a with a ponytail. I, I remember. Oh, the, okay. Probably not Maltman then. We d- we've never had anyone with a ponytail, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recall, but probably not more. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a, it was a good experience. Yes. I mean, um, I, as we were discussing before, I was a uh, um, uh, I was quite shy at the, uh, during those years. But I think um, that experience of public speaking um, helped me a lot. Um, it's helping me a lot in the present as well. Yeah, uh, your job is public speaking. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it so feels I, like private speaking, but <laughs> <don't know. laughs> it's public speaking. Next time we'll do it live. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> Honestly, no problem. No problem. I love. I love it. I've always. El mami said lizatat, which which in English tr- translates to probably I don't know. I don't know what it translates to in English. Mm. Someone who's a show off, I suppose. But I've always been the kind of person who loves audiences. The bigger, the better. <laughs> so yeah. 
<laughs> Why not? Well, then, then, and uh, there's a lot of training when it comes to public speaking, and uh, yeah. so it's, it's quite a, it's quite a craft. But that's now I've noticed yeah. when we started the Maltman. The reason that we started Maltman was because we realized that yeah. it was so lacking. Mm-hmm. We didn't really have many avenues to turn to because when we thought, right, we need training to do these simulations, who are we going to go to? Back th- back then, <laughs> I sound old, but in in 2013 there was uh, young European federalists, Jeff, and they were more focused on European studies style um, workshops and getting to know more about how the European Union works. So it was very specific. Um, and then there was uh, the English speaking union who do and s- who still f- uh, conduct fabulous workshops um, and they do do public speaking events and simulations but and then we got cocky and we thought right we can do this ourselves <laughs> but back did. then it was yes we did we were very cocky <laughs> it serves you right in, yes. that, in that regard but it was just them really yeah. and truly so Degree Plus doing a public speaking workshop, that was probably already a good two or three years after we were established mm-hmm. because that's when things like that started to become appreciated. Mm-hmm. And now even Azat do a lot of public speaking. There's so many now. You can have, There's a choice now. Mm-hmm. Back then we didn't really have that much choice. And I think it's especially important, important for young, 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 young children. Oh, yes, totally. Um, as we were discussing before, I, I'm very much involved in the Scout movement and... Um, most kids spend so much time um, online or, or, or using yeah. technological gadgets that when it comes to presenting their work, mm, even if yes. it's if it's uh, within their own um, comfort zone, so for example, they're speaking about a game that they love, yes. um, it's still very difficult to speak in front of, 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 of their peers. And I think it's I think it's the fear of judgment because um, they know that um, yes. if they go on social media, the judgment is very cruel. I, I yes, think it does the correct roasted. way. It's very um, demeaning. And I think they're rightly so. They are afraid of that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think hand in hand with that, I think we have to, to, to learn and to teach that we have to treat each other with respect. And if uh, giving feedback in the right way, it's yes. very important. Yes. There's no need for, to, to destroy one, uh, one no, another no. to give feedback. No, that's true. Um, it, that's a, it's a mixture of it's a mixture of things. I mean, personality is one thing. I mm-hmm. mean, you do find people who find it incredibly difficult to to be extroverted. Um, so if you already have that, I'm not saying you're at a disadvantage, but you, there's already one one filter in your way. Yeah. When you're a teenager, and then it's it's worse because obviously part of being a teenager is caring so much about what other people think about you. Um, and yes, you're right. I mean, we. We do teach kids to be, even in schools, we teach them to be nice to each other. I mean, it's part and parcel of how we teach, but Mm -hmm. we don't teach them the elements, I think, of how to be nice to each other. It's just up in the ether, be nice to each other, but how? Um, So listen actively. We don't really teach active listening, if you notice. I mean, even my students, they're adults. They don't listen to it. They listen to me when when I'm talking. All of them stop what they're doing and they listen. But as soon as one of them starts talking or presenting, they're on their phones. And, you know, that's not active listening. We don't do that. That's how we need to teach that. And in fact, I stop them. I tell them, listen, your, your body language is disgusting. You're putting off the presenter. Please change. Sit up straight. Yeah. Make eye contact with them. Nod, even if you don't know what they're saying. doesn't matter. Switch off. But look like you're listening, at yeah. least. But the value, you um, know, you need to teach these things. I th- you might feel that the since the student is your peer and the, sort of your equal, there's nothing that they can teach exactly, you. Exactly, so, there's no need to listen. Whatever. So uh, I, th- I think that but that's, that's very the uh, wrong attitude yeah. to take. Even if you're not listening, it doesn't matter. Switch off. Think about your game. Think about where you would much rather be than this classroom. It, it's fine, but at least you're not putting them off what they're saying and making them feel like nobody cares about what they're saying. So it's not important mm-hmm. because that's something else. And even when you're an adult, it still hits you. Oh, no one's listening to me. Mm. Am I saying something wrong? Mm-hmm. So you still get doubts. And that's one thing that we do need to teach. It's not just be nice to each other. And then criticism. How do we criticize each other? How can we phrase it politely or nicely? How can we divorce personal attacks from yeah. your point is rubbish, but it's the point that's rubbish, not you? <laughs> yeah. So that's, again, something you need to teach. You need to teach the language for that and the attitude for that. Mm-hmm. 
uh, components. You need to break things down for, for kids these days, especially these days, because they spend so much time online and mm -hmm. that environment, everything is allowed, everything's permissible, yeah. that they don't learn what's not permissible in the real world. Yeah. And, and it's, it's easy shame. because you, you hide behind your profile picture, behind your yes. avatar, because yeah, behind yes, your everyone's a cowboy there. Your online persona, so yeah. it's very easy to, to shoot a comment like that. Yes, yes. And uh, a lot of people don't consider comments to be writing, so they just shoot them off. They don't sit there, reread, edit before posting it. They don't consider it to be, it's so close to speech. They just shoot it off. Mm. So there's uh, no filter. It's like a pop-up when you get a, a pop-up in your mind. And yes. you, just, you just say, you speak yes. your mind. It's literally that. Literally, yes. And it's a shame because, again, it's written down. People will read it and reread it, especially if it's something insulting and yes. they're hurt by it. Yes. So do try and consider it. And, and, and if we actually think about it, I never sat down and think, uh, thought about this. Um, it's the... It's the online world. Um, yes, <laughs> it's calling. <laughs> um, uh, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, you never sat down and thought about. Yes, something. I never sat down and thought about. Um, the moment you say something, then the moment you speak your mind, you're speaking through your primitive mind, mm. because that's that's usually the the the, the raw feedback, the, the raw output sort yes. of, and then. Um, this the this raw output is then filtered through your more rational mind, and yes. then you, there's the actual output, the things yes. that you say, and uh, and whenever if if you pass on these comments online, you're speaking in in, in, in the primitive way. Yes, yes, so yes. Sort yes. of you're speaking through your primitive mind, and we're not actually adding value to what we're saying. We're just mm -hmm. shooting comments. Like that. Mm -hmm. And face to face, social norms is another filter that you filter yeah. things through. Like, if I'm going to insult you to your face, at least I will remember that you're in front of me. I will remember that we're part of a society. And mm -hmm. usually, in most societies, insulting people to their face is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. But online, that it doesn't feel like you're in a society. It feels you're still alone mm -hmm. online. So you don't even filter through that. It, literally, everything comes out. There's no rules. Which is a sh I mean, it's a shame. It's useful for many things. I mean, it, it does allow for freer speech, I suppose, in many mm -hmm. ways. But younger, younger generations who are being raised thinking that the online world is the world are going to lack lots of social skills. We're going to have to treat them like they're from a different planet, <laughs> I think, when we come to teaching them and educating them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of things that we took for granted these days, I'm realizing... I sound like an old woman, <laughs> but, but I'm realizing that they're not taken for granted so much anymore. They're mm. losing purchase a little bit. Well, it's a 10-year it's a gap, which is not a lot in the no, grand scheme it's of not. things. But, the, but thanks, to thanks, or no, thanks to technology, things have moved and changed so quickly yes. that, uh, that things are so different than, than mm -hmm. that, they were used, that we are, were used to. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they do feel like an alien. We do feel like uh, alienated in, in, yes. in that sort of sense. Yes, and the two years of COVID didn't help. Yeah. Because of course everything moved to online platforms, so we kind of lost that sense of society as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, that definitely didn't help, especially... I was speaking to someone and they told me, do you know that those two years of COVID means that they didn't have the two-year sixth form experience, which is yeah. we were talking about this before. And yeah. I thought, what? They didn't have their sixth form experience? That's irreplaceable. They can never have that again. Yeah. So you, that place where we learned so much and where I, where I learned who I was, really, yeah. they missed that. Yeah. And the friends I have to this day are the friends I made in sixth form. Mm -hmm. They didn't make those friends. So it, it broke my heart, honestly, when hearing about that. And I thought, oh, those are the kids who are in university now, first yeah. and second year. How sad. Hopefully they're having a great time. <laughs> I hope so. I hope it's a party <laughs> to for make them. Up for that, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, because it's, uh, it broke my heart. It really yeah. did. Because there are years of, uh, as we we're discussing, there, uh, there are years of um, active formation of your character, of yeah. your identity. So they're so important. And the, the socializing aspect is key to yes. that. Yes, and you find out your likes and your dislikes. Yes. And, uh, and they miss that. It's so sad. And they were at home for that. 
what sort of advice would you give to, to these students? Oh, honestly, I, I, I'm not going to say fail your first and second year, but honestly, for you guys, <laughs> academics yeah, come yeah. second. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Do as many things as you can. Join as many clubs and um, clubs as in organizations and, <laughs> and I mean, go clubbing too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, involve yourself in as many things as you can that, it, that are student life related mm -hmm. and learn what you like. Do things you don't like just so that you know not to do them again because you don't like them. Mm -hmm. But try, experiment much more than you would normally do. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, you missed those two years, make up for it. Yeah. Yeah. But don't be, don't be irrational or irresponsible. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> do it responsibly. <laughs> but in a fun way. Yeah. That's a sound <laughs> yes. advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Remembering that I'm an adult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is reminiscing those, those, yes. those the, the, the younger days? I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yes, yes. Enjoy as much as you can. Nice. <laughs> Clara, what are your current like, future aspirations? What are the things that you're mm. working on that are going right. to impact your future? Okay, so at the moment, um, my biggest goal is, and again, I'm going to sound terribly old, uh, saving up so that I can eventually aspire to buy a property okay. on this island. Well, good, <laughs> <laughs> which, good luck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is looking more of a, like more of a challenge than it did 15 years ago but definitely yes that is the biggest priority save money be be, be responsible so that eventually i can have my own property yeah that is the plan um but also also now that i've i'm out of university for the first time in 10 years say no to whatever i don't want to do that is a life goal because in the past i've said yes even to things that i don't want to do and because i've had to now yeah. i don't so now I can say no whenever I like to whatever I like. Mm -hmm. And that's a goal. <laughs> Seems like you discovered, you discovered yeah, yourself. I discovered my power to say yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> but also say yes to the things that I, I do want to do and make time for them. Mm -hmm. um, and also enjoy myself as much as possible. So travel. Because I've really missed traveling, especially with COVID. Mm -hmm. So travel, see as much of the world that I can, uh, as I can, while I still can. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are the goals. Save money, but also enjoy a little bit. I have to be very careful Try about traveling then. Yeah, <laughs> travel on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> travel on a budget. <laughs> Maybe staying in Europe will help. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Although, having said that, some holidays to quite exotic places turn out sometimes to be quite actually cheaper it's than the trip that is traveling expensive. in Europe. Uh, uh -huh. It depends uh, on the flight. But yeah, that's, that's the expensive part. Things can part. be arranged. Yes, things yes, can yes, be yes, arranged. For sure. <laughs> but yes, it's a, it's a tightrope. Trying to enjoy and trying to save money at the same time. Those nice. are the goals. Academically, I can't say I have any goals at the moment, <laughs> and I'm well, happy you, with you, that. <laughs> you, you reach the, the the highest point in no, academia. No, there's further you can go, but yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy to stop here for yeah. the moment. <laughs> yeah. For just to give myself a break. This is my gap year. Yeah, after ten years, you, <laughs> after you ten deserve years, a break. I took my gap year. <laughs> Well, yeah, ten years. That's the plan. Ten years of university, but yeah. obviously you just no, kept on going. No, obviously, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I didn't stop because I would have gotten rusty mm, and yeah. it would have taken longer to get back into gear again. Well, in my case, I had to take a break because uh, before I enrolled into my master's program, I had to uh, have two years of experience. Work oh, experience. right. Okay. Yeah. So I couldn't just continue um, studying. Wow, okay. And it was a mandatory prerequisite. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yep, actually it would put you in a favorable, favorable position, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. No, not much work experience can be gained in yeah. literature, really, so <laughs> <laughs> just read. <laughs> well, it's very advantageous because you can continue, you can progress. Yes. <laughs> they take it for granted yeah. that you have two years of reading experience minimum. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, that at least, I suppose, you could have drawn from your work experience. Yes, and yes, then, yes, yes, yes. So you weren't really getting rusty while no, you were working. No, no, it... it and you are priming. Contrary, it gives you context. So, yes. so yeah. But you, yeah, you do get trusty about research and uh, yeah. and references studying and, and studying. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yes. But it's about mm. discovering them uh, as you go along. Yes. But uh, the work experience would also probably change those, I suppose, in a way. Mm. You'd realize that you work better like this than like this. After your studies or during? After working. After those two years of working, when you went back to studying, you probably oh, yes, realized, for sure. For sure, for sure. oh, I've been doing this all wrong. For the yes, and you use different technologies and different yeah. systems to, to help you be more efficient. So the work experience optimizes you in a way yes, for it. Yes, because it's, it exposes you to other systems that there are available. So yes. um, as a student, you're limited to Word document, 
and PowerPoint presentation or, or the equivalent <laughs> Google uh, yes. equivalent. So <laughs> and the Mac version. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You're limited to those. Yes. Uh, but beyond that, there are many other yes. uh, programs and software that you can use yes. to, to optimize your time. Now even more so. Yeah, for with, sure. With AIs and yes. all that. Yes. Um. I, I had plenty of AI conversations with Claire. So <laughs> yes, Claire is Claire is making all of us fanatic AI fanatics. Yeah. But mm, she, she's on to something. Um, but but it's the way something. to go. It's the future. So yes, um, it's as revolutionary as the internet. Yes, and even the the ki- I call them the kids, but they're adults. The students that yeah. I teach right now, a lot of them go, oh, there's this AI to do this. Really, really, tell me, tell <laughs> me, what is for? What's it for? <laughs> so I think it's about teaching um, or educating about their use. So, for example. Yes. Um, and, Till present, we still have the issue of Google Translate. So many t- mm. students use Google yes. Translate to. Um, but somehow they they know that Google Translate isn't reliable. But they use it anyway. But they use it. <laughs> but I've noticed that they're a bit more judicious about the way they use Google Translate than the way that they use things like ChatGPT. ChatGPT, they just copy and paste. Yes, that's it's, the it's, tendency. It's easier. It's easier. But with Google Translate, a lot of students go, mm, "This mm, this looks fishy. Yeah. Mm, no, I'm not going to use this." So they, they've developed that, that critical skill with Google Translate that they don't yet have with ChatGPT, I, I find at least. Because mm-hmm. even, even the language students that I teach, they will go, mm, teacher, is this all right? <laughs> well, with ChatGPT, it just gives you the answer right away. Yes. Um, Google Translate, you still have to check the, the syntax of the sentence yes. and the choice of words, especially if you're translating from one language to another. Uh-huh. And they yeah. notice sometimes, ah, oh, this is probably a literal translation, yes. things like that. They have a good instinct for. Yeah. Chat GPT, they trust implicitly. Yes. Which of you use regularly, we all realize that sometimes Chat GPT is inaccurate, yeah. wrong, <laughs> doesn't know as much as it thinks it does. You still have to use your own judgment. Yes. But it's very easy to become lazy about using. Oh uh, yes. It because it's very convenient. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, I keep telling the I keep telling the students, you need to earn the right to use Chat GPT and and AIs which mm. means that you need to have the skills in place first and mm. then use it if it's going to optimize your time. Mm-hmm. But if you can't write to save your life, don't use ChatGPT to write for you. Learn mm-hmm. how to write and then you can use it to shortcut. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But mm, it's going to take a long time for them to learn that. <laughs> it is, it, because it's very easy to be resistant about it. So Yes, it's very and they, they go, oh, I can make my life easier. It's like when they used to tell us, use a calculator in math. Don't use a calculator yeah. in math. So yeah. we used to go, why? It's there, we use it. Yeah. But yeah, you, do, you don't develop the, the soft skills to be without it. Take on that challenge, sort yes. of, yeah. And it takes uh, time to master the, the art of writing, yes. the art of articulating things in a sort of way that are intriguing yes. to others. And this AI program just I don't have it. the time for that. <laughs> <laughs> just use it there. Yes. Uh-huh, but I, with, I'm sounding like my math teacher, basically, going, you can't use your calculator. Yeah, but it's I a, know it's a that. very nice analogy. So but it's important. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've come round to her point of view. <laughs> just not about maths, about language. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Clara, how was your first experience on a podcast? I've really enjoyed it. It hasn't felt like the only difference is the microphones in between us. Yes. It's, it's very much like having a conversation. And we've have have been really going at it for... Yes. Two a lot hours of unrecorded to- material. <laughs> yes, There's extra yes. credits. <laughs> 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 so yes, no, it's been lovely. It's been like having a, a, a good chat with an old yeah. friend. Yeah. So yes, brilliant. Thank lovely. you very much for the experience. Thank you for being here and for your <laughs> My time. My pleasure. It's been a great chat. My pleasure. And uh, I appreciated the fact that we've touched upon many topics. Yeah. And, and we've... <laughs> We've, we've delved into them quite quite deeply as well. So Good. I hope we've said something useful for someone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, f- I'm quite positive about that. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Clara.